Howdy, howdy, folks. Once again, this is Donnie, and this time I'm coming at you with a bit of a security problem. Well, I should say potential security problem because it's there, but it's not enabled, right? But it's a potential security problem I found with the Red Hat Linux distros concerning the way they uh, are suggesting that you configure sudo. Now, sudo, for those of you who don't know, is just a way that uh, uh, an administrator can assign privileges of one user to another user. And of course, the most common way to use it is to assign uh, administrative privileges, or in other words, root user privileges, to another user. And you can assign either full pseudo privileges so that the user can do everything that the root user can do, or you can just assign just certain specific privileges to another user so that that user will only be able to run those specific commands. But uh, uh, this morning, I was playing around with the brand new beta of Almond Linux 10, which of course is derived from Red Hat. Uh, actually, it's, it's uh, derived from CentOS 10 Stream, which is the same base as uh, for the uh, uh, actual Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And uh, uh, so I found an interesting problem. And let me zoom in just one more on that time on this. Okay. But anyway, I'm logged into the Alma Linux 10 beta virtual machine here. And we do sudo vsudo. And vsudo is the way that you edit the uh, pseudo configuration. And uh, one of the things I absolutely love about the Red Hat style distros is that when you open up the sudoers file, which is the configuration file for, for assigning pseudo privileges, you have a full blown example of how you can set it up. And it, lots of comments in here which uh, explain exactly how you can set up your, your pseudo privileges for other users. And one of the things here that's handy is these command aliases, right? And none of them is enabled at the moment. You can see they're all commented out, but you can see there command alias networking, and then it gives a list of the different networking commands that a that that the person who's assigned to this command alias can do, right? And you know, like uh, software management, and uh, for whatever reason, they've never bothered to update this though because yum command uh, no longer relevant it's now uh, been replaced by DNF don't know why they haven't updated that and uh, services uh, and so on and so forth storage whatever else right so if you assign a person let's say uh, the services command alias then uh, that person can do this service command check config command again those are out of date I don't know why they're still there uh, System CTL, uh, system CTL uh, of different commands uh, uh, with different options and so forth. And uh, I'll take that back. The service command is still useful in one case. So, but anyway, that's a whole different story. Uh, command alias storage. Uh, the person with uh, who's assigned that uh, command alias can do F disk, SF disk, parted, part probe, mount, and U mount. Okay, so, so far so good, right? But look at this one, delegating permissions. Command alias delegating equals USRS bin v sudo, bin ch own, bin ch mod, bin ch group. All right. Now, fortunately, as I said, that command alias, I mean, all the command aliases are commented out, so none of them is active and nobody has been assigned to this command alias, right? But here's the thing, right? What if you were to come down here and 
just uncomment this, and then assign somebody to that command alias. Well, you might think that you're giving that person limited pseudo privileges just to do these four commands, but you're not. You are effectively giving that user full pseudo privileges over the entire system. Because think about it, okay? You give a person, you give a user the privilege to run vsudo. What's that user going to do? That user is going to go in and give himself or herself full pseudo privileges, right? Because if that person can pull up vsudo, he or she can configure full pseudo privileges for himself or herself, okay? So you've just completely defeated the purpose of trying to assign just limited privileges to this person with this delegated command. Now, uh, let's say that we were to get rid of that, okay? So we recognize that that is a problem. We'll just get rid of it. Okay, so now all the, all the user has is just privileges to run chown, chmod, chgroup. Well, does that help anything? Uh, no, because that, uh, because if, uh, if a user has these privileges, then he or she can go in and like change permissions for other people's uh, home directories and get into their stuff and uh, you know, possibly uh, change permissions and ownership of, of executable files that normally only a root user would be able to access or to, or to run. So again, you've completely defeated the purpose of assigning this user limited pseudo privileges. Okay, so what is the best way to deal with this? Uh, like that. Just get rid of that altogether. Don't even consider using it, okay? And uh, yeah, why it is that Red Hat did something like this, I don't know. And at first I thought that this was just something brand new, just a brand new problem with the Red Hat 10 family of, uh, of distros. But uh, turns out, I just looked here a few minutes ago, turns out it's also in the Red Hat 9 family and the Red Hat Eight family, and uh, I, for some strange reason, I just never noticed that before. I just never noticed it until today, until just a couple of hours ago. So yeah, and that's the thing. It, it's really ironic, you know, because sudo is supposed to be a security measure to prevent security problems, right? But if it's configured the wrong way it can introduce security problems. So this is just one of the many things that you'll want to look out for when you're dealing with sudo, right? So anyway, having said that, let's have a word from my sponsor. And my sponsor is me and my books. And the first one here is Mastering Linux Security and Hardening which is a practical guide to protecting your Linux system from cyber attacks. And uh, the cool thing about this book is that it goes through uh, not just Red Hat, but uh, also Ubuntu and uh, uh, a little bit about OpenSUSE. And uh, it just shows you how to secure your Linux servers as just make them as secure as possible in order to prevent intruders from coming in and compromising your systems. And uh, you got a lot of five-star reviews there. And uh, be sure to check it out and see why. I'll have the purchase link in the video description below. And then we also have Linux service management made easy with SystemD, advanced techniques to effectively manage, control, and monitor Linux systems and services. Now, this is not a book about system D. This is the book about system D because it's the only one that's ever been written about system D. So if you're a Linux administrator, you're working with an enterprise uh, grade of Linux, whether it be Red Hat, Ubuntu, uh, even Debian, SUSE, 
they all use system D nowadays. So if you are a Linux administrator or want to be a Linux administrator, you've got to learn system D. And again, I will have the, the uh, uh, purchase links in the video description below. Okay. So anyway, folks, I think that about covers it for now. And uh, so I'll go ahead and sign off. Have a great day. Be sure to like and subscribe. And I will see you next time.